All right, welcome to module seven uh, in the ongoing series on hidden Markov models. And this particular module is going to focus on one aspect uh, that I kind of glossed over in the previous video lecture, and that was uh, trying to find the settings for the parameters that maximize the likelihood of the data. So, uh, as before, um, just to remind you, uh, HMM is described by this model theta, and theta is defined as nothing but a collection of these probabilities. There's one probability for each state to start at that state, a probability uh, for each state of going to another state, and a probability of outputting uh, observation symbol at a state. And these constraints make these uh, probabilities. So we have to make sure that they sum to one, otherwise there won't be probabilities. So these constraints are going to be very important in what's to come. And we're going to use the running example, the same toy HMM that we've been using. So as we saw, um, the log likelihood of the data for some label data. So this is label data x1, y1, all the way to xm, ym. And for each of the uh, start states, transitions, and emissions that we see in all of these label data, we can describe that in terms of the parameters pi, a, and b in, the, in this way. So the frequency of the number of times we saw something times the log of the probability. That'll give us the total log probability for this particular data set, right? So we're trying to maximize the likelihood of this data set. And uh, we saw that last time uh, the updates for the pi's and the a's and the b's to update that was simple counting. So count how many times it occurs divided by the total uh, in order to make it a probability and that's it. So in this section we're going to actually derive that update. So L theta is the log probability. We want to find the theta that gives us the maximum value of L theta. So we're searching for a theta that will give us the maximum value. And the way to do that is to look for um, a value of theta where there is no more improvement in L of theta. Basically the rate of change is, um, is zero, which means that we can think of it as for a particular uh, L theta. So let's say that it's a very simple likelihood function that just looks like this in two dimensions. Well, clearly we know where the best point is. It's going to be here, right? And that corresponds to the point where the derivative is going to be zero. So that's the point, uh, that point that touches the tangent. And so all we need to do is find the derivative, uh, set it to zero, and that'll be the theta that we're looking for. Okay, so that's our task. But notice that theta is actually made up of pi and a and b. So we can actually split these up into three different subproblems. That is finding L of pi, L of a, and L of b, and maximizing each one of them separately. And that's because if we take derivatives uh, with respect to one component of pi, the L of a and L of b will be just constants. So they'll just go away because the derivative of constant is zero. So in order to look at the gradient of L, we're going to look at each individual probability, each individual parameter, and take a partial derivative with respect to that. And set that to zero, and that'll give us the value uh, of pi i or a sub i j that we want. And it's very important that we obey the constraints that make it a probability. So we want to make sure that when we find these the value of pi and a and b that maximizes that uh, log probability that we don't just assign something that makes it uh, so that the constraints are not satisfied. We want to make sure that they are still probabilities. So let's just narrow our focus down to just L of pi. Okay, so L of pi just looks like that. We've now say a and b 
well we're not going to consider that right this minute it's actually you can do that separately in a way that's exactly analogous to what we're going to do for l of pi so we forget about a and b just focus on pi and if you look at this it has two sums and a frequency uh, times a log of pi i and we are trying to find the optimal value of pi i so we want to make sure that this is a probability so we're going to add a constraint we introduce a new variable and this new variable is lambda and lambda is called a Lagrange multiplier and what it does is it introduces uh, an additional constraint so not you don't just want to get the best pi sub i's but we want to make sure that those pi sub i's uh, sum to one so in order to do that we add it to the optimization as a penalty so if you have something where it's not going to be this sum is not zero sorry one not zero if this sum is one that means this one minus one cancels out and you get the original term L of pi right so if something if we get a pi that violates the constraint uh, essentially we always get a penalty which makes it a worse solution than obeying the constraint so we want to make sure that we obey the constraint and that makes sure that pi is a probability distribution okay so we want a value of pi i such that this partial derivative with respect to a single pi sub i. So we're now focusing on one parameter at a time. And we want to set that to zero. Okay. So in the previous slide, we saw that this was the definition of pi sub i, right? It's summing over all i. So what I'm going to do is split up this sum so that it's only pi i one of the pi i's and then everything else uh, is listed as a separate sum. So that's what I've done here is just take into, into consideration i and then this is a sum over all the j's such that j is not equal to i. And the reason we do that is this is the only part with variable pi i there's no pi i here so this derivative is going to be zero because it's a constant. So all we really care about now is this this part and this part uh, we want to take the derivative okay so we considerably simplified that complicated equation so now all we want is to make sure that the derivative of this part plus the constraint so we can't forget the constraint is set to zero and that's where we'll get the best value of pi i okay so apart from this lambda here and this sum, uh, the rest is f you know, just taking the derivative of that function. So if you take the derivative of this times the log of pi i, we know that by the chain rule, if you have a constant, so this f of, uh, f of i x l y l, that's just a constant, just a number, right? number of times you saw that state as a start state. So that number is a constant times log of x because uh, pi sub i is a variable we want to maximize. So it's going to be uh, 1 over pi i is the derivative of log of pi i uh, times this constant plus the derivative of this times uh, log of pi i, the derivative of constant is zero, so that part goes away. So what we end up with is just f, the constant, number of times you saw uh, that state i divided by pi i, because the derivative of log of pi i is one over pi i. And the same situation here, uh, if you look at expanding this term, you get lambda plus lambda minus lambda pi i, minus uh, lambda so I've just separated out this sum again into just pi i and then everything else that's not pi i right so this is not pi i is represented here that's a constant so that goes away 
and then lambda times pi i the derivative is just lambda okay um, and that's because again you have um, pi i times uh, lambda times the derivative of pi i which is 1 uh, that's just lambda plus pi i times derivative of lambda which is 0 so you get the derivative of this part is here, the derivative of this part is here, these just go away because they're constant. Okay, Let me just clear that. Okay, so we can obtain the value of pi with respect to lambda. So if you simplify that stuff on the previous slide, just get rid of everything that's zero, you get uh, this particular uh, derivative and we set that to zero. Now if you set that to zero you can see that uh, you can rewrite it so that lambda goes on the other side so you get this is equal to lambda right and then you can just switch the places for pi i lambda so pi i becomes uh, this term here right that's here and divided by lambda. So pi i, which is what we want, we want to get an update for pi i and we've gotten one, except the only thing is, the only problem is we've gotten it in terms of lambda and we don't know what lambda is. But we know that lambda has something to do with the constraint. And the constraint is that this, for each k, pi sub k is equal to one, right? So we take each pi i and plug it into this constraint here, then what do you get? Well, you get sum over k, like here. Let me just clear it. Sum over k, which is here. Sum over l, which is here. f of i, which is now f of k, because we are iterating through k's, right, uh, is equal to 1. Um, and so if you take this and substitute it here, you can see that the lambda can be pulled out of the sum. So it's going to be 1 over lambda, 1 over lambda, sum over k, sum over l, f of k for that xy. Right. Um, so what that means is you can take this lambda and take it to the other side to 1 and we get lambda equals this part which is this part here. Okay. So if you do the algebra uh, you know you can see that you get a value for lambda which I can then substitute back into this equation for this lambda. So I can just take this and substitute it back and now I get an update for lambda uh, for pi i sorry. Um, so you can see that taking these two terms one of them is pi i with respect to lambda we found what lambda should be set to um, and now pi i is simply the same thing we saw uh, before which is the number of times you see a certain state as a start state divided by the total number of times you saw anything else including i as a start state. So that's um, if you saw noun as the uh, start state four times out of a total of six you get a probability of four over six or two-thirds, right? That's what we saw last time. Um, and if you do the same thing for pi and a and b, you get the uh, intuitive updates that you take the sum of each time you saw it in the label data and then divide it by the total number of times you saw all the other alternatives. So basically taking the derivative gives you the intuitive update rule which is uh, count the number of times it occurs, divide by the total, you get the probability.